I love to talk. It took a, a, a lot of courage for me to talk about this, about this topic here, here today. For my fellow classmates, as you guys might have learned or guessed already, I have a stutter. And no, I don't stutter because I'm nervous. I stutter because I have a speech dis disorder. And again, I love to talk. And it's not painful. The only thing that makes me uh, uh, uncomfortable is your perception that I'm uh, 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 uncomfortable. So today, I'm going to talk about stuttering. Stuttering is a neurological disability, and one that carries with it, uh, and one that carries with it, and one that carries with it, uh, a stigma. So at first, it was hard for me to come to terms with the fact that my speech is entwined with my identity. A 2019 study found by a group of, of, of researchers found that the communication disorder of stuttering in particular may be perceived as a disability and part of an identity, and as such is unique in its nature as an impairment. Worse, an, a 1997 study concluded that people who stutter experience higher rates of unemployment or underemployment despite having comparable knowledge, skills, and abilities as those who do not stutter. Think about that. People who stutter experience higher rates of unequal opportunities despite having comparable knowledge, skills, and abilities as those who do not stutter. So let's break it down. Why do people assume stuttering, a speech disability, is a reflection of a person's cognitive abilities? After all, people who stutter have achieved success in all kinds of imaginable profession, academic, and, and social settings. Now, I'm going to say this to all of us and to my fellow stutters out there. A person's stutter has no re relationship at all to someone's intellectual prowess. It is simply just, uh, 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 it is simply just a, 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 a neurological tick. And as someone that has this disability, I like to think that my cognitive abilities are just as strong as my peers. I get decent grades, I can think, I can write. Actually, I, I love to write. <laughs> it, it's one of the things that, that makes me feel fluent and heard. I also love to read, like I really, really, really love to read. You know, there was actually a time when I thought that reading would somehow cure my stutter. I always hoped that if I read a lot, the words could somehow break the rope that is tied around my vocal cords. There are many assumptions that people make about stuttering. According to a journal article written by Thomas Klassen, in 2001, a common finding of past research is that people who stutter are stereotyped as being more guarded, nervous, self-conscious, tense, sensitive, hesitant, introverted, and insecure than on stutters. That common finding is linked into one of my worst fears concerning my life at, at this moment. How long will my disability last? I always ask myself, will it prevent me from getting a job? Will it prevent me from finding a partner, friends? Well, in the end, I've come to terms with the fact that I have to either embrace my stutter or cower behind it as I've always done. The exact cause of stuttering is unknown. Most scientists believe, however, that stuttering has a neurological cause affecting parts of the brain that govern how speech and language are, are, are processed. Because of genetics, stuttering can run in, in families too. In, in my case, I inherited my stutter from my dad. But my siblings don't have it though. In fact, both of them are fast talkers. And I envy them because they can react to the world, world around them in ways that I cannot. Because 
by the time I'm able to master a, a response to someone's offensive comment, they have walked away. Other people can react verbally in real time, whereas I'm often several beats behind. Not in my head, just in what I can say out loud. Other than real life interactions, people's assumptions about stuttering can also be influenced by what they watch. In, in movies, for example, there are many fictional characters who stutter. Now, do you know who this is? This is Professor Curtis Curl. He is a character from Harry Potter and the guy who was subjugated by Lord, by Lord Voldemort. Now, as you can see, at the beginning of the first Harry Potter film, it was obvious that Professor Curl stutters. But at the end of the film, we discovered that he faked his, his stuttering to seem aloof and not to draw uh, uh, attention to his plot with the e e e evil Dark Lord. So what does that idea portray to the audience about stuttering? To, to, to children, that people like me are somehow possessed by evil or trying to execute an e e e e evil plot? I mean, I mean, it would be cool to at least do some evil once in my life. <laughs> Most people still regard our speech impediment as the result of nerves or an indication that we are less intelligent than others. Let me tell you again, we're not. So, what can we do? It's all about perception. Perception of others and of ourselves. But, can you change Perception. Yes, you can. According to an article written by the University of Minnesota, how we perceive others can be improved by developing better listening and empathetic skills, becoming aware of stereotypes and prejudice, developing self-awareness through self-reflection, and engaging in, 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 in perception checking. But I know that it takes time to change perception when the ideas, when the ideas are already entrenched in, in your mind. So what can society do to educate others about stuttering? And how can listeners control their reactions? Well, here are my su suggestions. Number one, normalize speech, normalize speech disorders in schools. Understand the differences between disorders and disabilities and value both equally to normal people. So, dispel the myths that people who stutter have lesser mental skills than others. Number two, people who stutter are often not given the opportunity to speak or finish their thoughts, whether it's, it's family or, 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 or friends, they might try to cut or finish our sentences. And let me tell you, it's painful to not be heard. So if you ever encounter a, a, a stutter, or if you know one, let them speak. Be patient. Count to five in your head to create enough time for them to, to talk. And mine, and mine, the body language, specifically with the eyes. Narrowing eyes to concentrate or looking away while a person is speaking might enhance their feeling that their language comes across as, as, too, as too cringy, that it makes them want to look away, which relates to my last and final su su suggestion. At times, other people may try to cut our senses off, not because they don't want to hear what we have to say, but because they assume that it is uncomfortable for us to stutter in, in front of others. Perhaps they want to help us by removing our discomfort or even their discomfort of watching us while we speak. But let's both be comfortable with the uncomfortable. Humans are, Empathetic. 
when others feel pain, we do too. But instead of removing the pain, allow us and yourself the permission to feel it. Allow others the, the space to feel their discomfort to work through it and have enough time for them to complete our sentences. To conclude, we, people who are not always given the opportunity to speak our minds, are more numerous than one might think. You, me, we are all human beings. That means we learn, we laugh, we think, but most of all, we can speak. And with little changes, we can be heard. Thank you. Thank you.